Hayao Miyazaki is a name that you might be familiar with. If not the name, then most likely some of his works. Either you've seen this, this, or even some of these. Throughout his 82 year old life and the 38 years that he's been the co-founder of Studio Ghibli, an animation studio that he's founded with his best buds, he's directed nine films under his belt. And all these films have found some form of critical and financial success in one way or another with each one of them being creatively distinct from the next. We got huge spirit beasts, cat buses, samurais, kids flying on broomsticks. Miyazaki has done it all, and each time he successfully tells it compellingly. His stories feature high concept fantasy ideas and creatures, but what they all share in common are the grounded main characters and compelling themes. That's why in this video essay, I'm going to be breaking down how Miyazaki's films work so well and have stood the test of time, and how Miyazaki's insane creative process has affected this. I think the most important question to start off the video is what makes a Hayao Miyazaki film? Tons of things can immediately identify a Miyazaki film from any other animated film. If it's the unique style and tone, story structure, or its main characters bring a sense of childlike wonder and awe to the story. But out of all of those valid reasons, I think it stems down to one important point. Miyazaki himself, and how the stories we're watching on screen are parts of his story too. This can be said about almost anyone who's literally ever directed a film. Having influences from your life are constantly seen in directors' works. However, I find Hayao Miyazaki's creative approach to getting influences for his films extremely fascinating. Because if we take a sneak peek into Miyazaki's daily routine, not only do we see him whipping around Japan in his sick ass car, but recording while doing it, basically being the pioneer of daily vlogging back in 06. And not only is Miyazaki strong on incorporating influences from his everyday life, but also incorporates influences from people around him to create his characters. As growing up for Miyazaki, his mother was often in poor health. From from the time Hayao was six, she spent most of her time in a sick bed. Despite that, Hayao has spoken highly of her strong will and resilience during that time and incorporated those characteristics into the Castle in the Sky character Dola, named after his mother of course, Dola Miyazaki, who passed away six years prior to the release of Castle in the Sky. The character of Dola is seen at the start of the film as a gruff nemesis to the main characters. However, throughout the film is seen as more of a caring and loyal ally to the main characters Shita and Pazu. Not only are the influences of his mother's personality traits seen in Dola, but seen in other characters like Yasuko, the mother in My Neighbor Totoro, and Toki in Ponyo. These are motherly-like characters that are faced with an illness, however, remain strong with even under their unfortunate circumstances. Miyazaki, as we've seen before, is also influenced by what's around him in his present day-to-day -day life. This makes sense for Miyazaki's films, which mainly have the main protagonist being a younger woman, when Miyazaki himself is clearly neither of those. As during the time making Spirited Away, Miyazaki felt like he needed to tell a story about a younger, ordinary heroine. After observing one of his friend's 10 year old daughter, he realized that there were no films out there for girls like her that resemble them and that they could actually identify with. This is why Miyazaki wanted to make the character of Chihiro a character that doesn't have special abilities necessarily, but still is someone who is a capable person and that this character could speak to girls of that age. Miyazaki constantly strives to bring in these high fantasy elements while at the same time creating these characters that feel authentic to ordinary people, which makes his films feel human. And multiple examples of adding small yet significant details to the characters are seen throughout Miyazaki's work, and it makes more sense when you figure out how Miyazaki chooses to start out working on his films. Not by scripting the film and writing the emotions of the character, but by storyboarding it. As Miyazaki starts his films by storyboarding them and visualizing the characters through the drawings that he makes, showing that emotion rather than writing it out. And this shows incredibly well in his films, which are visually impressive, not only in the fantastical world, but in the characters in the films as well. And not only through the designs, but through the characters themselves, Miyazaki fleshes out these characters to feel authentic with their desires and goals that feel universal and that any person of any age can connect with. Either it's Chihiro learning how to become independent in the world, or Kiki learning to overcome self-doubt. Even antagonists in Miyazaki's world are fleshed out and don't fit the typical stereotypes and are given redemption, as characters that are seen as inherently evil at the start 
often change the way we view them and we see them through a different light. Specific enemies in Miyazaki's films aren't just plain evil, and their ways of thinking can be understood to a degree. As Princess Mononoke has the theme that we've literally seen so many times before of people versus nature. However, Miyazaki creates a sense of dread for these villainous characters that fear these fantasy-like creatures, and you see both perspectives on this war going on, and Miyazaki creatively chooses to tell these themes through these spirit beasts. And with that, he leaves the film on a strong and impressionable note, with it ending in a striking and grandiose way that visually depicts uniquely the effects of humans versus nature while creating a visually striking and beautiful sequence. And I haven't even touched on the visual beauty that Miyazaki fills to the brim into his films, mainly because of how well known this statement is, as Miyazaki is a master of great world building, not specifically through dialogue or exposition, but through the sights and sounds of his films, as his worlds are bringing architecture and landscape designs from different places around the world, yet create a visually distinct environment, and inside these environments are fantasy creatures that have real world animal-like qualities to them, which creates a sense of believability to this fantasy world and not being these extremely far-fetched characters that viewers can't connect at all to. And this is not only shown with how Miyazaki visually shows his characters and locations, but with how he uses great sound design to hook the viewer into the world that he's created. With every gust of wind or crickets chirping, it makes the viewer feel like this fantasy world has been thoroughly lived in. The sound design of Miyazaki's creatures is also extremely integral with lots of these characters, as these are non-speaking creatures, but the sounds that they make fit perfectly to the character's demeanor. Even the cat bus has sounds that fit perfectly for this creature. If you were to guess the sound of a door of a cat bus opening up, would it be this? Well, maybe not, but it fits perfectly with the vibe of this creature. And through the sights and the sounds, Miyazaki pleasantly shoves the most childhood whimsy and wonder into his feature films. And it makes sense because like I've stated previously, the majority of his films have young children as its main characters. And in these films, we're seeing their perspective of the world and how they view it. And Miyazaki never downplays it in each of these characters. And no matter how ordinary they are, they have a level of intelligence. And that stems down to how Miyazaki in real life never wants to downplay children, as children all over love his films, but he doesn't specifically cater to them as he makes his films in mind for anyone. And Miyazaki himself has spoken about how he's opposed to simplifying his films for children, saying that children can understand and grasp the complexities of the world, and not to underestimate them. And that perfectly shows through the audience reception throughout his career, with adults and children alike admiring and enjoying the wonder of Miyazaki's films, and those children then growing up and now seeing these films in a new light and can respect them in different ways. And it works perfectly because a lot of Miyazaki's films center around the ideas and themes of nostalgia, with growing up and learning about the world around you and becoming independent. Miyazaki has spoken about this saying that kids too can have feelings of nostalgia, as kids live and they lose things too, and Miyazaki is not afraid of showing that truth at the end of the day. As his films have these magical and strange world and creatures, but through every film, Miyazaki puts his characters first and foremost. And I think that's what strongly resonates with us, as you see the impact in Miyazaki's art, as his films have connected with viewers of any age all across the world. Ha <laughs> ha.